I've already suggested that Scotland's a wealth, wealthy country with a highly skilled population. It has less than 1% of the EU's population. But it has 60% of the EU's oil reserves. It has EU, the EU's second largest gas reserves. And if we look to potential for green energy, Scotland has 25% of the EU's potential tidal power, 25% of the EU's potential offshore wind power, and 10% of the EU's potential wave power. If you put all those things together, current industrial structure, its universities, its educated population, and its natural resources, there is huge potential. It'll take independence with our priorities to realize that potential. The first one is that somehow there's been some nationalist flu that has spread throughout Catalonia, and people have decided that somehow Catalans are better than Spaniards or something, and therefore uh, we should get out of it. Well, there's been, you know, this should tell you something about, about Spain. So there's a question that's actually quite old, you know, in the barometers in Spain that asks you basically, how do you define yourself? Okay. These are the percentage answers in Catalonia. Okay. Same date as the previous questions before. It is true, there is a small shift towards identification with only being Catalan. Right? But even this, you know, it's only one fourth of the population identify themselves with only being Catalan. And in fact, there's one funny thing that should tell you something about uh, where Spain comes from. The Constitution has a funny clause. It says that it is the obligation of all Spanish citizens to know this language. You know how many other constitutions in the European Union have a clause like this? In Canada, both languages are official at the federal level. You come out of the plane in Vancouver, which is a few thousand miles from the closest people that speak in French, and the signs in the airport are in French, and you could actually talk in French to the border guard that looks at the immigration. This would be completely unthinkable in Spain, of course. Okay. If you happen to be a poor citizen in Catalonia, and by the way, no matter the language that you speak at home, you are affected by this. just one preliminary point as well, which is that I also think that the way things are going, there is a movement towards yes, who can say for certain what will happen on the day, but I think it's going to be very close, which means that even if there is a vote for no, I don't think the question will go away for a whole generation, which was what was initially suggested, even by the First Minister, Alex Salmond, he said this is a one in a generation thing. I think now we can say it's not going to be a one in a generation thing. If there's only 5% or less between the yes and the no, this will come back. Moving on to the easiness of the transition, um, yes, I mean, the obstacles, the terrible difficulties, the problems, these are things that those in the unionist camp have a lot to say about. And I've sit and watched an awful lot of parliamentary committees, select committees, both in Edinburgh and in Westminster, who have been all too happy to point out what these would be, both with the process of dismantling the United Kingdom and also with the process of a Scottish accession to the EU. Yes, there would be problems. Of course there would be problems. But I don't think those problems would be as great as has been suggested by a lot of those who are arguing for better together for a no vote. In the case of the EU membership, um, well, it would have to be started um, by the UK government. The UK is the sovereign member state of the EU right now. But there is the Edinburgh Agreement between the Scottish government and, West and the UK government. And Section 30 of that Edinburgh Agreement requires both parties to co co cooperate regardless of the result of the referendum, their very best endeavours. So there is a legal obligation on both sides to cooperate. Those countries have different identities. Uh, that means, particularly on the linguistic front, we have to do massive, symbolic and real changes. The parliament needs to have debates in this Catalan. The prime minister and the king need to address the Catalan country Catalan. We should have Catalan and Basque classes in the high schools and in the primary schools so people actually get exposed to these other languages. They are learning Latin or Greek, or they are learning German, or why are they not going to learn some 
Catalan and Basque in the list, and I think that would be great. And all those things would make a massive symbolic difference. In a crisis, in an asymmetric crisis, there are two mechanisms that political union gives you that are crucial, which are fiscal transfers, for example, for unemployment insurance, and bank bailouts at the central level. The United States Federal Reserve will bail out them back in Arizona if there's an Arizona real estate crisis. And people know that, so people don't run out of the bank, of the bank in Arizona. Okay? If Arizona was a separate state with a 70% drop in the prices in Phoenix, Arizona, and in, in the state as a whole, you would have had a huge amount of banks that would have failed without any, they would have provoked a big fiscal crisis in Arizona. And then they wouldn't have been able to pay insurance, etc. As it was, unemployment insurance came from the US, the FDIC saved the banks, and there was no problem. Okay? That would certainly not be the case. And the, 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 the problem is that the markets would infer that the UK would probably, and the, 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 the ramp UK, I don't know how to call it, that's why I said England, the ramp UK would bail out Scotland, so the no bailout wouldn't be terrible, and you would be exactly in the same mess we were. Yeah. I'm a photographer, I'm supposed to work with you, but uh, it's too interesting not to answer. <laughs> but I hope I did not uh, miss the point, and it's uh, obviously a very simple question. It's because to me, the whole debate is more or less about social justice. So, and the question is, if there would be more social justice in Scotland, for example, in Catalonia, so if, come back to the statistic at the beginning, if you would be one of the more happy ones and more prosperous ones, wouldn't, be, wouldn't there be the debate today? I stick to our two uh, Scottish and uh, Catalan speakers on that. If there were more social justice, wouldn't we have? Uh, wouldn't, we wouldn't there be the discussion? And, and, and I've said before um, in public, if I thought voting yes would lead to a right wing government that would take us from the EU, and voting no would lead to more social justice, then I'd be voting no. In my case, I think that's basically, you know, that you are going to basically be trying to make a the last uh, yeah. Especially the slow burn of the Catalan secession movement tells us that this is the case. Basically, things have only become, people have only gone for independence once all the other routes for getting different.